This is what the Earl Sea looked like in 1977. And this is what the Earl Sea looks like now as of 2021. Back in the 20th century, the Earl Sea was the largest source of fishing in the Soviet Union. At the Soviet Union's heyday, over 40,000 employees were employed. And in the 1980s, commercial harvests were becoming unsustainable. And by 1987, commercial harvests became non-existent. Commercial harvests became non-existent due to the declining sea levels, and the salinity levels were too high for the 20 native species of fish in the Aral Sea. Due to declining sea levels, former fishing towns along the original shores had become ship graveyards. The town of Aral, being the main port of the Aral Sea, is now several kilometers from the sea. Aral has seen a major decline in its population since the beginning of the crisis. The town of Moynak in Uzbekistan had a thriving harbor and fishing industry with over 30,000 employed. Now the town lies kilometers away from the shore. After World War II, the region was ruled by the Soviet, which meant big projects were carried out, with the goal of boosting economic output and land around the sea were being converted from pasture to cotton fields. Farming and agriculture drew considerable amounts of water from the rivers replenishing the sea with water. This massively reduced the amounts of water flowing into the sea, and by the 1990s, the water in the sea had become so scarce, the water levels had dropped 15 meters, or 50 feet. By 1999, after the Soviet Union fell, the regional governments tried to conserve and seize the extinction of the sea, but their efforts were poorly coordinated. And so by the year 2009, water levels dropped by a total of 40 meters or 125 feet. The Aral Sea is divided into two parts, the Northern Aral Sea or the Southern Aral Sea. And since 2005, many water projects have been successful in keeping the Northern Aral Sea filled. Meanwhile, the Southern Aral Sea was largely abandoned due to massive droughts. The Aral Sea relies on two major river basins, one being the Sir Daria Basin, which feeds the northern Aral Sea. It is 3,000 kilometers in length and has a catchment area of 300,000 square kilometers. The other being the Amu Daria Basin, feeding the northern Aral Sea. It is 2,700 kilometers in length and has a catchment area of over 300,000 square kilometers. And together, they form the Aral Sea Basin. The Aral Sea Basin area grew massively after the huge expansion of irrigated areas and the construction of the Karakum Canal. This resulted in a flow reduction of Amudaria and Sirdaria, and most obvious is the drying and the shrinking of the Aral Sea. The Aral Sea, once the world's largest lake, had now shrunk to 10% of its original size. Attempts to recover the Aral Sea started in 1996 when a dam was built to retain water from the Sird area. To regulate the water level in this area of the lake and to irrigate the surrounding land, the idea was to sacrifice the South Aral Sea to save the North Aral Sea, but the dam built rudimentary with sand, mud and sticks broke a few years later. and. Another 13 km long dam was built in 2004 as well as several hydraulic installations on the river that were gifted by the World Bank. The North Aral Sea increased its level by 4 meters in only 6 months and that increased its size by one third in only one year and recovering part of its aquatic fauna. The most hopeful thing was to see that some of the water started flowing slowly towards the South Aral Sea. Water that was once 50 kilometers from the city of Aralsk is now only 15 kilometers away. The recovery of the lake is still far away, but there are already symptoms that show it is underway. Fishing is reawakening in the North Aral Sea, and farming is becoming easier. Health has greatly improved, and anemia has decreased by 65% due to improved nutrition though there is still a long way to the recovery of the Earl Sea.